it took around three, four hundred, six forty by four eighty rooms and just drew and connected them all together. So that's one of the things that's pretty widely acclaimed. Uh, the next is the Dust Force. Uh, you may or may not have seen it on Steam. It's sort of like a platform uh, speed run type thing where you have to clear the stage of all the trash on it. And the other one, which most people probably have heard of, is Hotline Miami, which is a top-down shooter, which is more of a puzzle than a shooter, where you have to get through the room without getting shot more than like twice before you die. So some of the pros of Game Maker, like it's very useful for rapid prototyping. That's what I use it for the most, especially for these like 48 and 72 hour like, game programming competitions. You don't really have enough time to make an entire like level editor and everything behind it. That's why I kind of use Game Maker because it's way better to spend like a day or like a week to see if like a mechanic is fun in a game than spending like a month or two months before you actually have something you can play. And if you find out, oh wait, it's the thing that I just programmed is not fun at all, I feel like you wasted your time instead of like a couple hours. It's also really easy to use, like anyone can pick it up and make something. And there's plenty of tutorials and open source things that are on the site, which anyone can pick up and learn pretty easily. Uh, it also exports to many platforms. So I run GameMaker 8.1, which exports to uh, Mac and Windows. But there's also Studio, which is the same thing. They just add a couple more features, and you can export to uh, Android, iOS, Linux, uh, HTML5, which is pretty useful and cool. Uh, it always really need to reinvent the wheel. Instead of having to make like a level editor or a platform thing all the time, you can just have a very standard set that you can always use. When you send it exports to different platforms, does it export like a, a compiled thing or a, a script file? Uh, the compiled version. Okay. So that's a better as like a media object? In... Uh, I haven't used like the HTML5 thing. I've only exported it to uh, Windows and Mac. Okay. But like for Windows and Mac, it's like PNC and stuff. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, the community supports good. One of the more interesting things is they have a debug mode. So you can play your game normally, it compiles it, you can play through it. But they also have a debug mode, which pulls up something on the side, which allows you to track whatever you want. So you can just type in, like, objects, players, health. And it'll tell you what the health is at all times. Or if you want to know if one of these variables, like, if you don't know what's going wrong, you can track a bunch of things and constantly reset and test to see if uh, what's going wrong and how to fix it. Uh, another one pros is like the standard version is 20 bucks. It's really cheap. Uh, there's also a free version which has most of the features. So if you you can just download it, see if you like it first. Does it take uh, royalties? No. Uh, there's this an obligatory XPCD because I feel like you, know, you can't have a presentation without that. So some of the cons, it's limited to 2D game development. If you want to do 3D, go to Unity, go to Unreal, go to something else that's not this, it's not meant for that. Uh, it also breaks programming convention, which a lot of programmers don't like. Like, you can do it normally, besides the declaration stuff, like you do bar, temp, and then temp equals three, semicolon, whatever, and it'll be fine. But I, it takes a little getting used to not have to say like all the standard stuff you have to do in other languages. Uh, and then Game Maker Studio, which allows exportation to iOS, Android, etc., uh, you have to pay for those modules to export. Uh, the, the standard Game Maker only exports to Windows or Mac. And that's the $20, but it costs like, I think, like $200 to get everything for like iOS or, or Android and stuff like that. So it's a little more. Yeah, and then. One of the things about game development, it requires more than just good programming to make a decent product. You can make something pretty good as long as you don't mind like using 3D resources or if you have an artist, it's even better. Because without the like graphic side of it, you're kind of limited in how good a product you can make. And then why should we care about it in soda? Like I feel like it's probably one of the best things that we can use, at least at the start of the year, especially with like freshman students who haven't taken Java before. Like, once they come in here, like, after the first week of job, they'd be able to use this easily. Like, the highest level thing would be, like, an array, which you can teach someone that in five minutes. It's also a different side of programming. Like, I feel like there's a different way to approach application development compared to game development, and the way they tackle the problems within each of them. And I feel like it's a good asset for a resume to have game development on there. I mean, in the internships I apply for, they didn't really care about, oh, you took Java, you made this program, they don't really care about that. But once 
you put game development, like, oh, you made a game? Oh, can we see that? Because you can show them the coolest job application in the world that most people that aren't programmers aren't going to care about it. It's also useful for competitions, so like uh, Loot and Dare, which are the ones I compete in, uh, Global Game Jam, and the Independent Games Festival. Uh, the first two are 48 hour and 72 hour programming competitions. So I feel like that's something at the beginning of the year that most people can get around because there's not a group size limit. So if you have like five people making just a simple game in 48 or 72 hours, at least they have a product by the end of it that they can be like, oh, this is something I actually did. Instead of having like this long, drawn out thing which they may or may not complete. Uh, I just want to show off a little bit of code and some of the things that I've done to get an idea of what Game Maker can do. Because I've shown some of the more famous things, but these are just things that I've done. Uh, is this what that was sound for? Like, uh, the sound ring? You can't touch the sound ring.
So like, I go, uh, this is my like press right event. So I have it so that if you're pressing right, you're walking. So you change the sprite to be walking right. It's very simple. And then if you press X and you're on the ground, so X is my shoot button, then now your sprite is shooting. It's very, very, very simple. It's exactly how you think it be. So you don't have to use any complex functions or whatever. And all this has plenty of documentation behind it. So most of the time you're only using like sprite index, keyboard checks, and just your standard variables. Like for the longest time, I didn't even know that there was loops inside of this thing because I never used them at all. Because you can do most of just this. The other cool thing that I like the most about it is probably their ring development. So you just zoom out. So this is like one stage or whatever. You do the entire thing based off of a tile grid system, which you can set above. So right, like right now, I have everything set to 32 by 32. But I can change that to 32 by 16 or 1 by 4 if I want to, whatever. It doesn't matter. And you get to place your different objects which go places wherever you want to, and then the tile. So their tile system works off of uh, layers. So you can just create a layer and put things on there. Then you can take and make another layer behind that if you want to, and put more tiles on there, and they'll overlap on each other. And then this interacts with the objects. So with the layers, you set some number, like 1,000 is the depth. And then for objects, each of them has their own depth that you can set too. So if I want the character to go behind the waterfall, I put the waterfall object in front of the player. That's how it goes through them. So that's basically the introduction to 